हेलो स्टूडेंट्स स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू ऑल परफॉर्म्ड वेल इन योर आई एन आई सी टी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री मे एग्जाम टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द पीडियाट्रिक्स रिकॉल बेस्ड क्वेश्चन ऑफ दिस एग्जाम पीडियाट्रिक्स क्वेश्चन वर रेलेटिवली ईजी एंड मेजोरिटी ऑफ द क्वेश्चन वर वन लाइनर्स सो लेट्स बिगिन विद द क्वेश्चन सो फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ फाइव ईयर्स ओल्ड चाइल्ड वॉज विजिटिंग विलेज विद हिज ग्रैंड मदर ही डेवलप्ड inconsolable cry on the way they visited pediatric emergency after 3 hours and on examination which features were present there was altered sensorium there was increased drooling of saliva or increased salivation was there cold clammy skin and there is increased sweating okay so you see there are the features of sympathetic stimulation is there priapism was present pallor was present okay heart rate 153 per minute which is tachycardia for this age so the because of the child's age is 5 years tachycardia blood pressure is 148 by 93 mmhg again hypertension is present RR is 38 per minute which is normal for the age 5 years of age so tachypnea will be more than 40 per minute so it's 38 so it's normal for age and the SpO2 is 96% okay so these all are the clinical features in this patient so the most appropriate treatment for this child is and the options are prazosin anti snake venom adrenaline and methyl prednisolone so now you have to understand that what the child is suffering from initially there was inconsolable cry and then there was a sympathetic stimulation is there okay there is tachycardia there is hypertension increased sweating salivation priapism features of shock are present in the form of cold clammy skin pallor okay so all these features are suggestive of scorpion bite in this child scorpion bite okay you know scorpion bite is a very painful bite okay because of this pain there must be inconsolable cry in this child and what happens in scorpion bite is after the local pain within 3 to 4 hours there is autonomic storm is present and there are features of vomiting salivation sweating priapism cold limbs and because of this there is hypovolemia which leads to then features of shock there is tachycardia hypertension and gradually there will be myocardial dysfunction with arrhythmias and pulmonary edema okay so these are the features which are characteristically seen in scorpion bite and the same features are seen in this child okay and in order to prevent these features we have to give prazosin you all know that prazosin is a alpha antagonist drug okay so it block the features of this autonomic storm so this is the first drug to be given to the child in order to prevent the features of this autonomic storm okay so now all of the four options the answer will be prazosin Okay so A is the answer in this question Now coming to the next question again a direct question a one liner non immune hydrops fetalis is seen in all of the following conditions except chromosomal abnormalities parvovirus b19 infection abo incompatibility and alpha thalassemia So this is a repeat question and the answer is abo incompatibility non immune hydrops fetalis is not seen in abo incompatibility in all rest three conditions this entity is seen okay next question which of the following is included in minor nadas criteria okay so nadas criteria you all know it's a screening tool for the to screen the congenital heart disease okay and it has two criterias basically one is the major criterias 
and one are the minor criteria okay so there are four major criteria which includes systolic murmur of grade 3 or more diastolic murmur any of the diastolic murmur is always abnormal okay number third is cyanosis and number fourth is congestive cardiac failure okay so these four are the major criteria and there are five minor criteria in the five minor criteria first is the systolic murmur of grade 2 or less and there are four abnormals now there will be abnormal bp abnormal ecg abnormal second heart sound and abnormal chest x ray okay so this is the nadas criteria so if any two major criteria has are present okay so two major or one major plus two minor so this signifies presence of a heart disease in the child okay which is to be confirmed by echocardiography okay so out of the four options that are present the options are the systolic murmur grade 3 this will be a major criteria diastolic murmur i told you it's always abnormal it's a major criteria abnormal second heart sound it's a minor criteria and abnormal chest x ray so these two are the minor nadas criteria okay next question a 18 months old child has a history of loose motions and vomiting for 3 days he presented in a state of poor sensorium in emergency okay so 18 months is the age 3 days history of loose motions and vomiting the child must have got dehydrated and now the child presented in the state of poor sensorium so which of the following statements are correct so it was a multiple options were there okay so now you know there are three stages of dehydration there is no dehydration there is some dehydration and then there is severe dehydration okay so two out of four criteria should be present to label some or severe dehydration okay so in no dehydration firstly the sensorium of the child will be normal sensorium will be normal in some dehydration the child will be irritable and in severe dehydration the child will be will have poor sensorium a lethargic child will be there okay now in no dehydration sunken eyes will not be present sunken eyes not present in no dehydration it's present in some dehydration and eyes will be more sunken in the cases of severe dehydration okay number third is oral acceptance so in no dehydration the child will be accepting the ors normally in some dehydration the child will be thirsty okay so he'll be asking for the water more and more he'll be a thirsty irritable child and in severe dehydration there will be poor oral acceptance not able to accept orally okay and number fourth is the skin pinch skin turgor so in the skin pinch in no dehydration it goes back normally in some dehydration it goes black slowly and in severe dehydration the skin pinch when you pinch the abdominal skin of the child it goes back very very slowly okay so these four things you have to always see if two out of the four are present then only we can label as some or severe dehydration okay now in this case as poor sensorium is present so the child fits in the category of severe dehydration and in the cases of severe dehydration it can be a hyponatremic dehydration when there are losses of the sodium along with the watery diarrhea is present okay so hyponatremia can also be present in the cases of dehydration also hypokalemias are seen in the cases of prolonged diarrhea and because of the dehydration that is present there is always a chances of complications like the cerebral venous thrombosis in these children okay 
and also because of this the child can throw seizures okay now hemolytic uremic syndrome is mostly children seen in the cases of after the bloody diarrhea that is the dysentery dysentery after dysentery mostly we see hemolytic uremic syndrome okay so it was a multiple choice answer so the answer would have been a b and d okay now coming to the next question which of the following are seen in iron deficiency anemia very direct and easy okay again it was a multiple option correct type of question so decreased serum iron yes it is seen in the cases of iron deficiency anemia decreased serum ferritin again this is seen decreased transferrin saturation yes it is also seen an increased total iron binding capacity yes it's seen so the answer to this question is a b c d okay now coming to the next question a child visited to pediatrician for dpt vaccination at 10 weeks of age and there is a history of inconsolable cry for 1 hour and hyperpyrexia after dpt vaccination at 6 weeks of age okay so the same child when the dpt vaccination was given at 6 weeks of age there was inconsolable cry for 1 hour and there was hyperpyrexia so now in this visit what are you going to do with the dpt vaccination are you going to defer the dpt vaccine for next one month are you going to administer the dt vaccine that is you are going to omit the pertussis component you will give the dpt vaccine or you will never administer dpt vaccine in this child so these are the four options so what are you going to do okay so for this you should know that what are the absolute contraindications of the dpt vaccine there are three absolute contraindications of dpt vaccine and the rest are the precautions or the relative contraindications the three absolute contraindications are number first is the anaphylaxis okay so anaphylaxis to any of the component of this vaccine if there is anaphylactic reaction it's a absolute contraindication number second is the encephalopathy within 7 days of administration of the vaccine so if encephalopathy occurs within 7 days of administration of the dpt vaccine so this is a absolute contraindication and third is the progressive neurological disease so remember it is a progressive neurological disease not a static one so in like cerebral palsy it's a static neurological disease so cerebral palsy is never a contraindication for dpt vaccine you have to give dpt vaccine in that case okay so progressive neurological disorder so these three are the absolute contraindications rest all which includes inconsolable cry hyperpyrexia seizures within 72 hours or hypo responsive episodes all these are precautions or the relative contraindications these are not the absolute contraindications for the next vaccination okay so in this case you will give the dpt vaccine and also there is no need to omit the pertussis component okay now next question a 9 years old female presented with multiple painful swelling bony swellings in the thigh legs and skull region so students uh, x ray was given in this uh, question i image based question was this was a image based question in which multiple bony swellings were shown in the x ray okay and the bone scan shows increased uptake also a skin rash is present and hypothyroidism is present the most probable diagnosis okay the options are langerhans cell histiocytosis of the bone mckeown albright syndrome papillary carcinoma of thyroid with bony metastasis and neurofibroma with bony involvement okay so this is a tricky question so now painful bony swellings with skin rash with hypothyroidism all these features are seen in the langerhans cell histiocytosis 
ओके मैक्यून एल्ब्राइट सिंड्रोम यू ऑल नो इट्स द सिंड्रोम ऑफ थ्री पीज एंड वट आर द थ्री पीज वन पी इज प्रिकॉशियस प्यूबर्टी नंबर सेकेंड पी इज पॉलीस्टेटिक फाइब्रस डिस्प्लेशिया एंड नंबर थर्ड पी इज पिगमेंटेशन सो कैफे ओले स्पोर्ट्स आर प्रेजेंट ओके एंड वन मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट यू नीड टू लर्न अबाउट द मैक्यून एल्ब्राइट सिंड्रोम इज दैट दे इज हाइपर फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द पिट्यूटरी एड्रीनल एंड थायरॉयड ग्लैंड सो इन दीज पेशेंट्स हाइपर थायरॉयडिज्म इज प्रेजेंट बट इन दिस केस हाइपो थायरॉयडिज्म इज प्रेजेंट सो मैक्यून एल्ब्राइट सिंड्रोम कांट बी द आंसर Now, papillary carcinoma of thyroid with bony metastasis is very uncommon in the age group of nine years of age, and also in neurofibromas, the neurofibromatous skin lesions should have been present. Okay, so this is also not the answer. Now, in Langerhans cell histiocytosis, what are the features? There is bony involvement. The skull is the most important site with the lytic lesions, but there can be involvement of the other bones too with the painful bony swellings. Also, skin rash in the form of the seborrheic dermatitis that is very common. Pulmonary involvement is very common. Pan hypopituitarism is seen with hypothyroidism in these patients. Okay, so answer to this question is Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Now coming to next question, the following image of the child shows a slap cheek appearance. So students, again image based question was there. in which i image of a slapped child was given in this question which of the following is associated with the same causative agent so this slapped cheek appearance you know the causative agent for this is the disease is erythema infectiosum okay which is also known as the fifth disease so slapped cheek appearance is seen in this disease and the causative agent for this disease is the parvovirus b19 infection okay so parvovirus b19 is the causative agent okay and the other disorders that are caused by parvovirus b19 is it is a cause of the pure red cell aplasia you all know it causes the aplastic crisis you all know Okay so it's a very important cause of pure red cell aplasia non hydrop immune hydrops fetalis okay and in neonates it in transplacental spread can lead to myocarditis also okay so the answer to this question is the question was which of the following is associated with the same causative agent and the options were molluscum contagiosum no gingivostomatitis no pure red cell aplasia yes kaposi sarcoma no kaposi sarcoma is associated with epstein barr virus okay so the answer to this question is c next question which of the following has least risk of perinatal transmission so perinatal means at the time of the delivery and the breastfeeding time that time okay so herpes simplex virus cytomegalovirus hepatitis b and rubella okay so answer to this question students is rubella because the spread of the rubella is maximum in the first trimester okay and after that it decreases significantly so the answer is rubella d next question in the transplacentally spread infection to a fetus there is anemia with probable myocarditis which later developed high cardiac output state and ascites the most probable diagnosis is students again a image was given in this question in which there was a fetus was there then there was involvement of the fetus was there okay and the probable diagnosis options are toxoplasma gondii phreponema pallidum which leads to syphilis cytomegalovirus and parvovirus b19 so as you see this question states towards the hydrops fetalis like condition there is a high cardiac output state anemia is there myocarditis is there and then ascites is there okay so the answer to this question is parvovirus b19 toxoplasma gondii you all know it leads to the hydrocephalus calcifications and chorioretinitis so chc is the mnemonic for the toxoplasma gondii triad 
there is chorioretinitis, hydrocephalus and cerebral calcifications which are diffuse calcifications and in CMV there are periventricular calcifications characteristically seen okay. Syphilis the presentation earliest presentation is snuffles there is rhinitis okay and in parovirus B19 all these features are seen. Next question match the following very very easy question again. So these were the options given and then the options were given let's match it trinucleotide repeats is seen in the cases of patao sickle cell huntington's or edward so it's huntington's chorea trinucleotide repeats were seen trisomy 13 is patao syndrome trisomy 18 is edward syndrome and in the hb sixth position replacement of glutamine to valine is seen in the sickle cell anemia okay very very easy question again next so as i in turn you attended a delivery and the child was msl the newborn was msl meconium stained liquor was present so according to the neonatal resuscitation program which of the following statements are correct again multiple correct type options were there okay so first intrapartum suctioning required before delivery of shoulders so students you know now no intrapartum suctioning is to be done these guidelines are have been changed now okay tracheal suctioning in non vigorous msl baby non vigorous msl baby no now no routine tracheal suctioning is to be required in non vigorous msl only you have to follow the normal nrp pathway that is you have to firstly take the initial steps and then do the suctioning of mouth and nose there is no need of tracheal suctioning next gentle mouth and nose suctioning in vigorous msl this statement is true and positive pressure ventilation in non msl after initial steps okay so if after following of the initial steps if the heart rate remains less than 100 per minute then you have to follow the positive pressure ventilation okay so, options C and D are correct in this case. Okay, next question. Identify the pattern of inheritance from this pedigree. So, this pedigree was given in the exam. So, look at the pattern of inheritance. A male is affected and then a male and female both get affected in next generation. Then female gets married, affected female, then a, a woman are affected then male also transmit the disease to men and a woman okay so as the male transmits the disease to the male so x-link pattern of inheritance is out of question now the options in this question are incomplete penetrance pseudo dominant inheritance autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive so as in this case in each cycle you see in each inheritance pattern that 50 percent of the siblings are affected and 50 percent are normal okay so the answer is autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance okay so this is the most common pattern of inheritance males and females are equally affected in this case okay and if the one parent has the disease so there is 50 percent of the chances of the disease and 50% chances of not having the disease is present. Okay. Now next question. Pompe's disease is due to deficiency of which enzyme? Very, very direct question students. So the options are lysosomal alpha glucosidase, phosphofructokinase, muscle myophosphorylase and glucose 6-phosphatase. So very direct question. Answer is lysosomal alpha glucosidase. Phosphofructokinase deficiency is seen in Tauri's disease that is glycogen storage disorder type 7. Muscle phosphorylase deficiency is seen in the McArdle's disease which is glycogen storage disorder type 5. And glucose 6-phosphatase deficiency is seen in the Von Gig disease okay, which is the glycogen storage disorder type 1. Okay, and Pompe's disease is glycogen storage disorder type 2. Okay, next question. Which of the following investigations need not to be done in a Turner mosaic? 
Okay, so for this you should be knowing that which all investigations need to be done in a Turner. So firstly, options are audiometry, ANA, glucose tolerance test, and ECO. So audiometry, it's an important investigation to be done in this patient because sensory neural deafness is a very common finding in Turner syndrome. Okay, so audiometry need to be done. Now, Turner syndrome are also associated with the autoimmune disorders. So, for the diabetes point of view, a glucose tolerance test need to be done. ECO is a very important investigation because they have a high chances of the maximum heart valve disorders, coactation iota and bicuspid aortic valve. Okay. So, that's why ECO is need to be done. But ANA is the is not need to be done in all the cases of the Turner mosaics. So, the answer to this question is B. AN is anti-nuclear antibody. Okay. Now, a very direct question was there regarding the FDA approved drug for the Red syndrome students. And the answer to this question is trophinidate. And the answer to this question is trophinitide. So, this is a new FDA approved drug in case of the Rett A syndrome, you have to remember it. Trophinitide. Okay. Now, next question. Banana sound on ultrasound is seen in. Again, a very, very easy question, students. Direct question. So, options are Down syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome, Omphalocene and Spina bifida. So, the answer to this question is Spina bifida. So, banana scene is seen in because of the abnormal development of the cerebellum and very commonly seen in spina bifida. Okay. Now, next question. A 4 years old child presented with high grade fever for 6 days. On examination, conjunctival ingestion, strawberry tongue and peeling of periangual skin present. Again, students, it was an image based question. Images were given of conjunctival ingestion. A strawberry tongue image was given and periangual skin peeling was there. Okay. The 2D echo reveals coronary artery aneurysm. Which of the following is best treatment? So, now we are dealing with which disorder students? It's Kawasaki disease. Very, very easy question. It's a Kawasaki disease. And the drug of choice for Kawasaki disease is IVIG. That is intravenous immunoglobulin. So, this is the best treatment. Rest you have to give the low molecular weight heparin, aspirin. So, these are also part of the treatment. But the best treatment is intravenous immunoglobulin. Okay. Thank you students.